Matt. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Good, good, good. Thanks for coming on our show. You bet. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to have... Oh, I keep reaching for the doors. Okay, so we're going to keep the doors open. Ooh. We looked it up and it's legal. Do I need a helmet? Um... Well, somebody did fall out of our van today, but just be careful, okay? okay. All right, just be careful with that. Okay. I'm buckled in, so... Yeah, because we had some teachers get mad at us for not buckling people, so that's why we make sure everybody gets buckled. All right. Got me? Yeah. Matt, let's talk about your career. I know you're kind of going through some changes right now, but uh, let's talk about what you've done, maybe what now, and what the future holds. Absolutely. So my career is shot off in... Gosh, I don't know. Multiple directions. And I've, I've attributed it to my ADD. I get bored easily with what I do. And so if, if I don't have something that's constantly challenging me, then I just, I don't know, I tend to get a little bored. Huh, I guess so that. my career as an adult started off uh, with me working at a snowboard company which was a lot of fun on a lot of different levels. Basically, we made snowboards and skateboards and wakeboards, uh, transitioned into surfboards. You know, it was a lot of fun. Kind of the whole deal there. Yeah, mm. yeah, and I worked there for six years and then I, I got a little bored of it and things happened to the point where I needed something else. And so I, I started working for a, a company called uh, Sizzle. That's actually here in Springville, Sizzle gotcha. International. And uh, it's not like a, it's not like food, is it? Uh, you know, there it actually there's uh, nutraceuticals and and some pharmaceutical type stuff. There's uh, they make makeup, shampoo. Um, but the cool thing about that company, everything behind it is toxin free, so it's it's free of uh, all the trace toxins that can that can harm you. Huh. And that was really fun to to learn about and to market. Um, my role there, I was a, a senior copywriter, so I wrote everything like product descriptions emails um, official statements huh. that sort of thing so like for example if you need if I had to write something about a foundation like makeup foundation or mascara I could do it not that that's ever gonna help me in my life but, but you did transition that this wasn't similar to your last job at all no very different hmm. so I went from the sports industry to the uh, it's very beauty makeup nutraceutical vitamin type stuff huh. So, quite a jump. Yeah, quite a jump. And then I, I started to get a little bored with that. I got pretty good at um, writing about that sort of stuff and marketing it. So um, I had a, actually one of my best friends, his name's John Niederhauser. He uh, led me on to this job at uh, Horrocks Engineers. And uh, again, completely different. I mean, you have like snowboard industry to nutraceutical to like engineering industry it gets you know it's quite a leap yeah and so I worked there for two years and uh, just actually recently just uh, parted ways with the company so um, yeah just looking for something new something different and do you feel like it'll be just as big as a uh, jump as your last ones you know I hope so really yeah why I do, you, do why uh, there's just something about a challenge that I like. Something about, I don't know, taking on something new that you don't necessarily know everything about. Something that you're kind of a stranger to. And taking that and learning about it and owning it and making it a part of you so that you can represent whatever that is better. It's, it's just something that I've, I've learned that I really like to do. That is awesome. Yeah. So cool. So you're, the thing that gets you going is the challenge, and you lose that by staying constant almost? Yeah, it seems that way. You need that change. Yeah, change definitely helps. Hmm. So. Wow. I don't know. I feel like if I'm not pushing myself and driving myself to learn something new or to try something new, it just, it's not that it, it becomes uninteresting, it just kind of loses its luster to some degree where it just becomes almost uh, second nature. It's just like you just float through life or float through existence. Huh. Float through a career, a life and having a career. I don't know, that's just kind of boring to oh, me. Deep. Wow, that is so true that I'm sure that resonates with more people than just me. Because I think the reason you stay there is because you just forget that you're doing it almost. Yeah. You're aware of it. It becomes very automatic. 
It's like when you're driving down the road and you're driving to work and you get to work and you realize like, oh my gosh, like how did I get here? I don't remember driving here at all. Wow. But somehow you got there and you're safe and just, yeah, just kind of on autopilot. Wow. It's almost like the free wheel's gone. Yeah. Makes you think of how much actually people actually use their free will, you know what I mean? Like, do you, are you happy with what you got? Yeah, you know, that, that's a really interesting concept. I have a, a, another really good friend, his name is Brandon Barrett. We actually were talking about him the other day. Yeah. He's a contestant on American Ninja Warrior. Um, he's going back to do the Team Ninja Warrior thing. Uh, great example, super cool guy. Um, one thing that he's always said and lived by is uh, you don't have to be the victim of circumstances. Um, but basically, you can chart your own path. Gotcha. You know, you don't have to just sit back and let things happen and, and accept them, whether you like them or not. I mean, if you like them, it makes it easy to, to go along for the ride. But if you get bored or if you don't like them, you don't have to be a victim of those circumstances. Wow. What a cool, cool guy. Yeah, he's really cool. He's probably yeah. the strongest guy I know. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's awesome. Well, great great dad too. And we're rooting for him. Is he he's still on, you said? Uh yeah, I believe so. I know he, he got in this last year and, and actually went really far. Um but I think he's still doing it. I don't see what I mean he's been training nonstop, so uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. Make a mental note to give him a shout out. Or give him a call. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> way cool. I'm gonna give you maybe a little bit of a harder question. If All right. You have free will and we should be doing what we dream, we choose. What do you think is your dream, you know, in a few years or do you have one, a big goal? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, you know, I used to set big goals. I mean, it's not that I don't set goals now, but I used to dream about, like for example, a big, a big dream of mine for a while would be to, uh, you know, to retire by the time I'm 35, to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. Yeah. I'm 36 now and I'm not retired, so none of that happened. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting, my outlook on goals and, and ultimate goals really changed once I had kids. Um, I realized that the goals that I was setting were somewhat unrealistic. And as soon as I had kids, those goals really kind of transformed into my kids. Huh. And so my long-term goal for myself right now, I would say, would be to be a good dad, to help uh, my oldest son, Daxton, right now. He tried out for a, a soccer league for Utah Storm to help him develop his, his skills and to become a good soccer player. And, uh, my middle child, Bridger, a super intelligent kid, really, really smart, extremely curious. He loves experiments, loves hands-on stuff. So my goal, like with Bridger, for example, would be to foster that and to learn new things I can do with him to help, you know, fuel that 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 question that's always in his brain. You know, why? Why does yeah. this work? Why? Why does that work? Why does gravity exist? How does it work? Which he's actually asking me. Huh? Yeah, he's six. So. Wow. Smart kid. Oh my gosh. So I don't know if that's. I mean, that's kind of an indirect answer to your direct it is, question. It is. But it is direct. And, um, but it's just not what I was expecting. It's almost, it's just, it's just touching because I probably won't understand it until you know, I have kids. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. And that's, that's the crazy thing about, I don't know, I think the crazy thing about finding out who you are as a person. Because when you have kids, you, your life isn't going to be like mine. You know, everybody's life is different. Everybody's path is different. But... It's the actual experience of getting there that helps you, I don't know, find purpose, find meaning, find out who you really are. It's like the process yeah. teaches you why yeah, he's a purpose to the result. Yeah, and you're absolutely right though. There's no way that you will really comprehend what I'm saying until you have kids. And once you have kids, it'll just be like light went off. Oh, this is what, <laughs> this is what Matt was talking about. I see. Wow. Well, I'm excited and very scared. Yeah. In a way. <laughs> it's not like, yeah, uh, it's pretty scary. <laughs> so I have, I have three kids and I still don't know really what I'm doing. I'm still just winging it. So, yeah. So if you ever feel like your parents are, are I don't know, being hard on you or whatever, just know that they're just winging it. <laughs> yeah. 
We're trying our best. Yeah, I get that. Well, thanks to all the parents out there. <laughs> Thank you. Way to be. Yeah, way to be. Um, wow, a little segue here. Um, let's see. Tell us about, describe doing something new. Describe exploring, finding something that's a challenge. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, there, okay, so I think, I think people can relate to this. I think you'll be able to relate to this. Um, you know, like when you start school and like, well, for me, I remember my first day in algebra uh -huh. and I remember sitting down in the class and the, the teacher, like the first day that we had a real class and my teacher, uh, talking about algebra and what it was and I just remember thinking like oh crap <laughs> like I am screwed I may as well just not even come to class <laughs> you know um, it's that situation but I think as an adult well being older as an adult I guess it's a little bit easier to understand and to take um, I've had a, a few experiences that have taught me that I can do just about anything and so seeing something that's new and that is almost scary, um, I don't know. It's very intriguing to me. It's seeing, yeah, seeing something that you don't know, seeing the unfamiliar, but realizing that you can know that just as much as you know anything else that you love and become an expert in it. It's that, I don't know, it's that desire to know it, that desire to understand it, really grasp it. Wow. So, yeah. It's like Walter Mitty is the, whatever they were talking about Walter Mitty. It's like life is going into the unknown, oh, seeing yeah. behind walls, some, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think, in my opinion, at least it's all based around your perspective. It's how you want to see it. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying when, like in my algebra class, I didn't just sit down and like say, hey, I love algebra, like I can't wait to learn this. Um, because that's definitely not what happened. It was something that I kind of had to look at. As, and as I got older, I, I realized that the way that I approach it is going to affect how I feel about it. Gotcha. And so, I guess with time and practice, I really learned how to do it. How to, maybe I grew into it, I don't know. Yeah. And But then eventually you probably did, um, you reach a stage where you get bored of it, as you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And maybe maybe that's maybe that's more of a curse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because uh, I don't know. It'd be nice just to have one job for the rest of my life and to not worry about the trivial things that come with not being employed. But then again, I can't imagine being bored my whole life. I'm just True. Go crazy. Man, it's catch train too there. Wow. Yeah. I think all in all, though, um, I think the. The journey, no matter what you do, the journey is, is your reward, a lot of it. Probably most of your reward is from the journey, finding out who you are and how, you know, how you get there and what taught you those things. Yeah, I'd say that. Almost like the phrase, uh, what was that phrase we heard, Stephen, from our documentary? It, it, he said, the journey, the journey is your reward, something like that. Remember the documentary you did with uh, the homeless people? Oh, found it. The treasures in the search. Mm. The treasures in the search, and, and it. I guess that does resonate with me, because making goals, it's like, when I accomplish it, I'll be happy. But I want to find something that makes me happy, like the process. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I I love oh, yeah. that. Love what you're saying with that. Yeah. Very cool. The process can be very rewarding. Mm. Then again, it's all how you look at it. You know, if you want it to be rewarding, you can find the good in it. Yeah. True. It's all in how you look at it. Awesome, awesome, man. Let's talk about, I know you like the philosophy or the idea of connecting the dots. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, this is a cool one. Um, I think that today everybody, it's easy to control things. It's like, for example, if you want to watch a movie, you go to Netflix. If Netflix doesn't have it, then you're going to find a way to get it. And probably within about five or ten minutes, you're going to start watching it. Uh -huh. um, and so... People have this idea that they have absolute control on their lives or what they do. Huh. Uh, but I, th I think in reality that's not really the case. I think that a lot of things happen in life that, I don't know, that have to be attributed to faith or fate 
well, based on your faith and fate and just how things happen. Um, connecting the dots is, kind of represents that, where uh, you can only connect dots looking back on experience, on what's happened to you in your life. Um, you can't actually forge those dots yourself. You can try to, but um, there's no way to really make that happen. And you can't really understand or, or respect that until you take a minute and reflect back on your life and, and you know, find somebody who's, uh, who's influenced you to become a better person or find somebody that you have had an influence on and just to actually see where you are and to wonder and to ponder, where would I be if I didn't know this person? Huh. You know, I've had a, a few of those in my life. Um, I have a, a cousin. Uh, his name is Jeff. He really influenced what I do and the person that I am today. And this was probably 18 years ago. Um, he had such a profound influence on me and, and really set me on a different path in life. And if it hadn't been for him, I don't know where I'd be. I'd be looking at very different dots than I am now. So it's just kind of neat. It's neat to see the little the people, the little experiences in your life that were placed there that are completely, completely out of your control, but they play such an important part in who you are. Wow, that is very cool. I'm writing these things down because the things you say are things I want to go try and implement, you know what I mean? Yeah. You just have the coolest thing to say. <laughs> coolest viewpoints. Cool things. Yeah, for sure. Um, can I ask you, what, what is uh, one regret that you have? <laughs> uh, you know, it, a lot of times it's hard to look back and, I guess, identify a, a regret. Uh -huh. Because every decision helps shape who you are. But one obvious one, I have a tattoo on my lower arm that I decided to get when I was 18. Yin yang right there? Yeah, I don't think you can see that. Which was 18 years ago. And I thought it was cool at the time. And a couple months later, I didn't think it was that cool. And then a few months after that, I just really forgot that I had it. But huh. because I forgot that I had it, it didn't mean that other people didn't notice it. Yeah. And so I've gone through a lot. Um, a lot of different situations where people will, will see it and then just make an automatic uh, decision about me or judgment about me, which isn't necessarily fair. I mean, people are entitled to their own opinions and can't really change that, and that's fine. I'm not going to tell somebody to think a certain way, but it's just, I guess it's just not nice because this tattoo doesn't represent who I am. Yeah. You know, it's not the only thing that I've done in my life to make me who I am. So for somebody to judge me off of one thing or to make an assumption off of one thing just doesn't seem really, really fair. I gotcha. It was so. like just a decision, but it's visible. Yeah. But then again, it's actually opened a lot of conversations and opportunities to talk about about life, I guess, with people. Yeah. So it's kind of a devil-edged sword. Interesting. So if there was something that I regretted, it would have to have to be that but again you know everything happens for a reason it shapes you to who you are so regrets kind of a, it's one of those one of those things one of those funny things that, that everybody has in it I guess if they want to acknowledge it or not it's up to them yeah it's so cool how you tend to have a um, uh, a positive outlook on most things and uh, I guess one, one more question Actually, can I ask you two more? Yeah. Just two quick ones? Yeah, absolutely. If you had to listen to one album for the rest of your <laughs> life, what would it be? I would have to say uh, Vessel by 21 Pilots. Really? Yeah. It's a great album. Um, I think a lot of people have heard of 21 Pilots lately because of their most recent album, which is great. Uh -huh. I mean, they can make really good music, but their album Vessel just really speaks to my soul, I guess. They talk about uh, problems and issues and real life stuff that I've experienced and that I still experience today. And it's just kind of a, a reassuring pat on the back, I guess. Yeah. So I get you. Even you as an old guy, it still influences what I do. Huh. So. Yeah. I like that. I, I don't know. I'm not sure about the album Vessel, but I like 21 Pilots. I have to look into that one. Was yeah. it an earlier one? Yeah. Yep. It was. Uh, so they've released a total of three albums. Um, the first one, self-entitled, then they got rid of the drummer and one of their guitar players, and they got a, a new drummer, and then they 
released uh, vessel. Huh. And then there's actually there's another one that's kind of in there. They did by themselves, regional at best. But huh. yeah, vessel. Give it a listen. It's really good. For sure. And then the last question, Matt, before we drop you off here at your home, um, what's your what? If you could define your happy place, where is mm. your happy place? My happy place is this random meadow, halfway up Lone Peak, which Lone Peak is in Draper. It's kind of Corner Canyon, um, one of the Wasatch Mountains. And the reason why it's my happy place, um, I went hiking with my cousin Jeff, the one that I was talking about earlier, and we got lost hiking up to Lone Peak, and uh, like the trail we were on just dissolved and it was gone. And so we hiked around for a, a few hours without this trail, we just kept hiking up. And the terrain was pretty rough, and I remember I got a lot of thorns in my socks and stuff, and it mm. just wasn't fun. But we got to this point where we kind of walked, we crested over this, this cliff, and right when we got up to this cliff, there was this huge open meadow. And it felt like I was the first person that had ever been there. Um, I remember the grass was about three feet long, and the wind was blowing just enough to just move it very, mm -hmm. very slowly. And it was one of those, those visual moments where you, you can actually see like a gust of wind go across this whole meadow. And I remember reaching that meadow with my cousin and just thinking like, I remember thinking, life's pretty awesome. Like life's really good right now. Um, and I felt like I was on a good path, I guess, a path that I needed to be on. And feeling feeling that and seeing such such beauty after such hard times, both in my life and both climbing up that mountain, it was just a real eye opener. And so, for me, whenever I'm having a hard time or if I need a minute to to calm down, if I need to go to my happy place, that's where I go. Wow. Well, because I I don't know I'm called back to that moment where things could be very different, but I don't know. Beautiful, man. That's my happy place. I haven't been there since either. I've tried to find it a few times and, and haven't been able to. Really? Yeah, and it doesn't mean it's not there. I know it is, but I just have to get lost for a couple of hours. It's like Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. You'd lo I'd love to go there. Yeah. That sounds so cool. Me too, again, one day. Wow. Well, thank you for such an incredible talk, su such a good chat. Sure, and yeah. And telling us so much about yourself. Absolutely. Let's see, we'll let you out here. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, we're coming up with ideas to be able to take the brainwaves from your brain and turn it into data.